Ladies and gentlemen, out of the many problems that the internal rate of return method has, one of them is that sometimes it can give us multiple estimates of internal rate of return and then we don't know which one of them is going to be correct. Now, uh, to understand that, let us uh, take a simple example. Let's assume a project which has $800 of initial investment. This one, that's why this is with a negative number. Um, the cash inflow from the project at the end of the first year is going to be $5,000, but the cash inflow at the end of the second year is going to be minus $5,000. Now, what you have come across here is a cash flow stream which is non-conventional. So when that happens, there is going to be a problem with the internal rate of return method. Let us try to solve the internal rate of return. What we are going to do is, as before, we are going to equate the present value of cash outflows with the present value of cash inflows. And then we are going to solve for K from that equation. So the present value of cash outflows is always the amount of initial investment. So we write that here, $800. And let us equate with the present value of cash inflows. So the first cash inflow is $5,000. Let us find out the present value of it by simply dividing it with 1 plus K to the power of 1. Or we can just leave it like that because it is to the power of 1. And from this, what we are going to do now, we are going to incorporate the second cash inflow, which actually is a negative number. So basically it's a cash outflow again. So what we do is we write a minus sign and then write another 5,000. And we find out the present value of this $5,000 now by dividing it with one plus K to the power of two, because this is the cash inflow or outflow happening at the end of year number two. So now what is going to happen from here? 800 is going to be equal to, now the, there are two terms in the denominator, one plus K here and a one plus K <coughs> whole squared here. So uh, what we are going to do is, let us first of all try to make things easy. Let us write down, let one plus K be equal to X. And so we can write down our previous equation as follows. 800 is equal to 5000 over X minus 5000 over X squared. So that will mean lesser typing and more ease of understanding. So now from here, 800 is going to be equal to. Now you see there are two items in the denominator, X and X squared. And from these two items, we can take x squared as our uh, common denominator. When we do that in the numerator, this is what we are going to have 5000 x minus 5000. And this whole thing can be divided by x squared. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to take this x squared over to the left hand side. So on the left hand side, we are going to have 800 x squared. And on the right hand side, we are going to have 5000 x minus 5000. So now what we are going to do is we are going to take the entire right hand side, these two terms over to the left hand side. And you will observe once we do that, we have 800 x square and then we are going to have a f minus 5000 x and after that we are going to have a plus 5000 after the transposition is complete and on the right hand side we are going to be left with zero and you will realize that this equation here has become a quadratic equation and we can simply solve it by factorizing it we can write this equation as 800 x squared minus 4000 x minus 1000 x plus 5000 is equal to 0. So we have factorized the equation above. And now what we can do is we can from the first two terms, from the first two terms here, we can take out 800 x as common. So let us do that 800 x as common. And inside the bracket, we are going to, to be left with x minus 5. 
and after that we are going to have um, from here these two terms we can take out 1000 x as a, um, or simply 1000 as common so let us take out 1000 as common and inside the bracket again we are going to be left with x minus 5 and is equal to 0 that means now we will have the product of two terms 800 x minus 1000 and x minus 5 so let us write that 800 x minus 1000 and multiplied by x minus 5 and that is going to give us 0 that means from here we can find out two values of x so one value of x will be when you are going to equate 800 x minus 1000 is equal to 0 when you solve for x from there your x is going to be 1.25 and when you equate the other term this one x minus 5 is equal to 0 you are going to find that x is going to be equal to 5 so there are two estimates of x 1.25 and 5 now remember we had assumed that x is equal to 1 plus k so that means 1 plus k is equal to 1.25 and 1 plus k is also equal to 5 so from here we can find out that the value of k is 1.25 minus 1 is equal to 0 0.25 or simply 25 percent and from here we are going to find that the value of k is going to be equal to 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 or equal to 400 percent so you have two estimates of k or the discount rate one is 25 percent and one is 400 percent so you have two internal rate of returns in this case that means the npv becomes zero at 25 percent rate of discount and it also becomes zero again at 400 percent uh, rate of discount so this result is pretty misleading and why this has happened because we are dealing with non-conventional cash flows and the solution to this problem is to find out what is known as the modified internal rate of return or the MIRR which we are going to do in some other screencast for now it is bye bye